All right, we're back. I'm Seth Juarez. This is the third day of Build, and there's tons of cool stuff happening here in San Francisco. I thought for sure we would have to talk about IOT. Is that what we're going to call it now? Let's do. Let's that's make good. it a thing. Yeah, let's do IOT. IOT. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, Doug's like, Seth, man. It's not going to work. It's late, it's late in build, isn't it? It's like the, it's left the last <laughs> day, and we've lost it. Right? And it's also way too early in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. So Azure IoT. Yes. I thought I would have some folks on about that, because they talked a little bit about it on the keynote. Yes. For those that are just starting to understand and know that IOT Still trying to make, you're killing like, me. That's, that's, you're not really stop me trying to make it happen. <laughs> uh, that IoT is important. I figured we'd have some people to talk about that. So why don't you introduce yourselves, what sure. you do, and then get a feeling for how you perceive IoT and why it's going to change the way we do business. Sure. So I'm Cameron Skinner. I'm the director of engineering for Azure IoT, the team that makes the Azure IoT hub. This I'm Doug Seven. I work with Cameron, uh, working on IoT stuff. Or IoT, I think. Oh, yeah, don't, I, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Stop trying to make it happen. Hashtag okay. IoT. Gosh, <laughs> dang it. All right. So, why don't you explain to us what IoT is, why it's important, and how people can sort of start to leverage the power of IoT in their business? Sure. So. IoT, <laughs> the Internet of Things, yeah. is this huge, huge wave of new te technological advancements that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. It's basically all these people with all these crazy little devices trying to connect those things up mm -hmm. to a cloud of some kind. Hopefully it's Azure, right? And basically, it's, it's a very interesting thing because it's the Internet of Things and it actually isn't about the things. It's about the data that those things are generating, right? right? And so what we're, what we're about, the Azure IoT part of this, is about all the services that make up all the back-end compute to handle all the data that's coming from all those devices and allow you to do something with that data. Right. Hopefully it's something actually interesting and meaningful for your business, mm -hmm. and turn that into something that's actionable so you can go go better yourselves in the marketplace. What my eloquent friend is trying to tell you is it's not IOT, it's IOD. <laughs> it's the internet of data. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice. Yeah. So, Doug, you work with customers. You've, yep. you've been out in the field. You've yep. done a lot of stuff with IoT. I love the, the sort of the pitch that you're giving. It's about the data. But I feel like as developers, maybe some concrete examples of how people are doing this Sure. in Azure will be sort of helpful to the conversation. Yeah, I mean, we saw some stuff in the keynote with, uh, we saw the kids who are sending stuff to space, right? And they're using a small Windows IoT device and they're connecting that to the cloud and doing great stuff. We've worked with construction companies that want to do environmental monitoring, so they want to make sure that, uh, you can imagine as you're working on uh, a hospital and you're doing an a extension to a hospital, well, on the other side of that wall, the hospital is functioning and you want to make sure that whatever you're doing in the construction environment isn't negatively impacting that, uh, that hospital. So monitoring the environment, for vibration, sound, air quality, things like that, all of that is done with these little sensors that you can sprinkle around through the environment and then pull all that data together into Azure and then visualize that data with things like Power BI, and then you can get that real-time reporting, you can get alerting, you can get all these great scenarios. But you've got th some of these scenarios that he's talking about are, are actually really complicated, but Seth, you would be surprised at how simple some of these scenarios can be too. There's a lot of customers that simply want to know, hey listen, did my device that is a, let's say a multi-million dollar device, did that suddenly start to move when it shouldn't? You know. I kind of need to know. Or just you know? where is it right now? Yeah, where is it right now? Uh, you know, simple things like that. Or, you know, hey, I've got a device and all I need to know is when that thing goes on or off because I need to go and kick this complicated back-end workflow when that happens. Because maybe that's some sort of alert or some sort of you know, emergency kind of thing. That only happens every blue moon, but it's super important that I get that signal so that I can yeah. orchestrate all this back-end stuff. So it, the, the scenarios range from the super complicated in terms of data workflow and, and yeah. analysis to the I just need to make sure I get the message from the device to do something yeah. with it. Yeah. Essentially, so, it, it, if I'm understanding this right, you have data that you need, but you're not going to have a machine, a laptop sort of hooked up to everything over there. You use these devices to sort of superimpose that. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, well, that's kind of what's funny about it is that that's what people have been doing up until now right. to, to solve this problem. Like in this construction example I was talking about, these guys were, they literally had these off the shelf, uh, you know, very expensive sensors connected to a Windows tablet <laughs> that was then connected to a modem and that was sending data. And, and the, the cost of that infrastructure to do that was astronomical and we were like, there's a better way. There's a better way. You can get these small devices and they can do all this stuff for you and we can drive down the cost, increase the capability. Um, so yeah, this well, I mean, it's great. And then the, when you start to think about all the different devices and all the different potential uh, uses of those devices, 
you, you, you look at it in the, in the small, and you say, OK, I need to connect this, this device, and I want to connect this to Azure. And you go through a bunch of steps. And that's actually pretty straightforward, pretty easy. But now when you start to talk about a scenario like Doug is talking about, where there's thousands of these things, yeah. and I need to go deploy these worldwide, and I need to put these in concrete, and I need to put these up in buildings, et cetera, et cetera. Or in space. Yeah. Or in space. Or, or just in space. Yeah. <laughs> or in the ocean, or I mean, yeah. wherever you need to put them, that then you, you've now just quadrupled. I, it gets hard, yeah. very, very hard to manage all those things. Because these things also, they'll fail. They, you know, they'll suddenly break. Um, they will stop communicating for some reason. Uh, the list goes on and on. And Be so, yeah, before we explode my head with this, just the, <laughs> let's start at the micro, because I want to talk about the micro level with the devices themselves. Yeah. And then let's explode out to the macro and then talk about how Azure can sort of help met. Because, I mean, if you have one of these things and it sends a signal every second for a couple of days, you're like, wow, that's a lot of data. But now you have thousands, hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of these things it becomes intractable, I, I'm, I'm guessing. So let's start at the micro level, let's talk about the devices and some of the capabilities that you're seeing, and let's go to the macro and see how Azure can okay. help with that. Yeah. Let's start, Well, so whenever I come, you know, I bring devices, I always have toys with me. Sure. So, so to start the device conversation, what I'll say is we, one of the things we announced here at Build is we have these new uh, Azure IoT starter kits. So I have a few of them here. There's actually one more that I, uh, we gave away all of them and I didn't <laughs> have the any left. Here. Sure. Um, <laughs> so there's a variety of devices, and this is just a representation of different types of devices you can use. This is the limit of the devices you right. could use. But we have you know, small devices like these first two, which use a sensor called the ESP8266. And why that's important is it's very small, it's Wi-Fi enabled, and it's super cheap. And so this is something, this is actually a really big version of that. So it gets really small, and you can put it into tiny things, and, and that is Wi-Fi connected and can start running code that, that connects it to is, Azure. Is a prerequisite for the sort of Internet of, of Things to have a device that's connected to Wi-Fi somehow? Is that the prerequisite, or is it part so of it? If you don't have connectivity, you just kind of have the of things part. Yeah, that's right. so, so then we're just ought instead yeah. of I ought, and yeah. it's bad. Um, but there's, there's other ways around that. So like these, these represent devices that all have Wi-Fi connectivity. We've got the ESP8266 device. We've got, this is an ARM Cortex device. Over here we've got uh, an Intel Edison, uh, which can, you know, this thing can run Linux, which is fantastic. Uh, you can run Node.js on it, which is sure. awesome. But uh, you can also have devices, and, and especially in legacy situations, where we've already got stuff in play, um, and we're connecting those devices over some other network, maybe a hard line network or something mm -hmm. like that, where we want to build basically a field gateway. We want a centralized uh, connection point where all the stuff will come together and we'll aggregate that data and that gateway will be responsible for connecting to the cloud. And so the, one of the other things we announced this week is we will have a field gateway SDK coming very soon. So we have device SDKs for all of these devices and then we'll have the field gateway SDK that will enable you to connect and manage all those devices and connect to the cloud and do all the things you want to That's do. That's interesting, right? Because it feels like you're like, oh man, the sensor 25,621 stopped working. What do we do? Well, we got to send Jim out again. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? Yeah. You're saying that this yeah. field SDK will help with that somehow? Yeah, well, it will help with it will help with a few things. One is that it will help connecting devices that can't directly connect. Right. Right. It will help in sort of grouping devices so you can sort of you think of the gateway as having a central point to, to manage a bunch sure. of different devices. Um, we find this pattern to be really prevalent. Like you think about things that have lots of sensors but you think about it mentally as one thing. Yeah. Uh, a car is a great example. Cars, you know, most cars coming out today have, you know, 30 microcontrollers in them and sensors and doing things. But but the car is a thing. Yeah. And so instead of dealing with those individual sensors, you can think of the a gateway in that car as the way to connect to all of those things. But let me jump in cuz the, yeah. the other thing that we talked about beyond the the Field Gateway SDK that we also announced. We also announced the uh, the device management capabilities that's coming. And, and to your point, your question actually, it's more about how do you manage all these things, mm -hmm. so that when you know instead of sending Bob out to fix <laughs> the firmware, that's actually something we showed in our in our talk yesterday, which is look from the cloud yeah. initiate a firmware upgrade, right? And that's so be, nice. Yeah. So be able to understand that this sensor, hey, we're not getting a heartbeat back from the sensor anymore. Uh, let's see, oh yeah, it looks like that guy's on, a, on an old firmware uh, and there's a problem with that, so we need to go update that. So initiate a firmware command, a firmware update command, 
which is this you know, fairly complicated handshake yeah. between us and the device because to be clear, Microsoft isn't actually going to do the firmware upgrade. We, we leave that up to you, uh, up to the reader. It's an exercise for the reader. Yeah. But we give you all the events and all the places where you need to participate in that handshake to do the right thing. For instance, from the cloud, send the device an URL that basically says, where should I pull the new firmware image, pull that down, initiate that, Let give us kind of heartbeats so we can understand the progress of that firmware upgrade, et cetera, et cetera. But then the, th the thing that's super cool is what, what Doug was just getting into is, I can start to describe topologies of devices yep. such that I can then go and upgrade this floor 15, yeah. right? That's uh, awesome. Room 25. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so I don't have to think about devices as ES7. Or, or West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so that however your business wants to group these and, and describe them so that it makes sense, so you're not talking about sensor 25000, <laughs> yeah. that's actually room 15, the light above the desk. Yeah. And that's awesome, because the first thing I thought of is like, oh my gosh, we're going to be able to remote upgrade these things? That sounds dangerous. But you're saying that we're not actually upgrading, we're letting the sensor do the upgrading itself. We're just going to tell you, hey, could you pretty please fix yourself? Yeah, I mean, so we're going to give you the, it's an open source agent that mm -hmm. you can run on that, on that, uh, age, on that uh, device. Mm -hmm. And so we basically, you can run whatever application you code you want, but we also have a little, little library in there to make things easy when you're yeah. talking back to the hub around device management capabilities. So, we basically will send you events. Think of it as, hey, there's a firmware upgrade. Do you want to? Can you handle that? Are you in the spot right now that you can handle that? Yes, I can. Okay, well then, pull that thing down and start the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we built the plumbing. Yeah, right. So the other question that I always get with IoT is this notion of security. Security is very important <laughs> because we've seen problems where IoT devices are like in people's rooms and some bad things happen, right? So. What are we doing to help address sort of the security concerns with IoT as a company? Yeah. It's, it's a big surface area, like no joke. It's a big surface yeah. area, especially when you start talking about the scale of devices that we're going to have out in the world. And there's security is a, a multi-layered challenge in IoT space because you have everything from hardware security to you know, messaging security mm -hmm. to your application. So there's a lot of it that sort of falls on the, the developer. Like sure. how, how am I, just like anything else, how am I securing my application? How am I securing the transmission of sensitive data? How am I doing that? On the hardware side, there's great solutions that have been evolving around things like TPM for, for small devices right. to secure the stuff on the chip and things like that. Um, and one of the biggest things that people have to think about as you're, as you're working with this stuff, like people think about these kind of devices and we get this question all the time, like this doesn't seem very secure, I'm putting a little micro SD in it, what the heck? And it's the difference between prototyping and when you go to production and you can burn into a chip and you can have TPM and you can have all the security Got on it. the device. You can deal with secure you know, SSL channels to, to send your messages and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of the same uh, challenges and, and solutions that app developers have been dealing with all along are in play and the only addition is the hardware part. That's awesome. And so it, it's, I, I understand, like, I could make software, but if I'm not security conscious, yeah. I'm going to shoot myself in the foot. Just with software, you also have to be the same mind, security minded when you're building these kinds of things. As well, well. And, the, and then with these devices, you have the physical nature of that device, right? Yeah. So this, this, this concept of, of IT meets OT, <clears throat> operational tech, mm -hmm. it's a big, big issue because if you lose physical control of that device, you know, what happens? Yeah, that's a good you know? question. All right, there's some questions coming right. in. Great. Can I use Azure IoT also for the IoT that I have built myself that's around the house? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking like my, my kids are getting to the age where they're going to start to hang out with other kids. I'm thinking of all sorts of sensors to know when they really get home. Oh, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> kidding me? But uh, we see this a lot with people who are like getting interested in this. And I, I love the space when, when makers start playing with stuff because Makers, especially maker developers, you know, the Channel 9 audience, they take this stuff, they learn about it, and the next thing you know, they're pros doing this in, for their companies and they're doing it for real. Right. So I love the maker space. And people take little devices like these and you know, they hook them up to switches and sensors and light stuff and they build their own home automation stuff. And Azure IoT is a great play for that. And then when you then bring that to work and you start saying, okay, what can we do in the workspace uh, and it scales big, Azure IoT can do that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, next question. Is there any difference between using the Pi Zero versus the Pi Three when connecting Azure IoT Suite? And we'll go to the larger question. 
Is there a difference between devices when you're hooking it up to Azure IoT? Which I think will help us lead into the discussion of, okay, we've talked about devices, we've talked about sort of managing a group of devices, now let's talk about pushing the data up and Azure IoT, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, sure, so the device SDK that we have is actually designed to run on the smallest of, of devices. So I think we need about 30 to 50K or so. Anything that can run a C runtime, mm -hmm. we need. Now, mm -hmm. if you also talk about um, you know, how constrained that is, then you start to talk about uh, what, what uh, communication layers are, mm -hmm. are on the device itself. You know, those are all kind of issues that we need to deal with. So in terms of the actual devices, if it can run as small, if it can handle a C runtime and up, we we yeah. can run on the device. We, we don't really yeah. care. But it's not, it's not restricted just to C. So we depend on the type of device. That's like right. if you look at what we have here, this little red device only has 512K flash on it. So it's very small, it doesn't handle a lot. C libraries go on that, C libraries go on these. You can put Node.js over here. We have C Sharp yeah. libraries, we have Java libraries. So there's, yeah. there's a bunch of opportunities. That's awesome, next question. What sort of devices can we expect to support Windows IoT Core today and in the future? I think you just answered that. Uh, yeah, I think right now, today, we have reference devices for Windows IoT Core, which we have uh, the Minimoard Max, which is an x86 processor. We have the Qualcomm Snapdragon, uh, the Dragonboard 410C, and we have the Raspberry Pi, of course. which is the ARM board. So we have, and, and uh, we have an Pi example. Two, right? Not the Pi 1. The Pi 2. Okay. Is, uh, and, and so we have basically an x86, uh, an ARM, and uh, um, uh, the Dragonboard, the Qualcomm. And it's crazy because I, there's some videos I've done where I've seen someone build a UWP app push it to the IoT device, yeah. literally just starts up. Yep, yep. And, and I mean the Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, holy cow, can you imagine the scenarios that you could sort of expect to be able to service with that kind of power and that little device? Mm -hmm. Next question, what is Microsoft planning communications for IoT devices? So what is the, I guess I don't understand the question here. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can, uh, yeah. the so, communication, yeah. how does that handle? So basically, this, this, this industry, uh, is just fraught full of different ways of, of how these devices talk to each other. It's, it is insane. Yeah, yeah. This machine to machine business has actually been going on a long it's time. A long we just time. now call it IoT because now yeah. it's not just machine to machine, but it's also machine to cloud. Okay. Yeah. So there is is just a soup of all these different protocols, and that, one of the things that we're trying to get done with the Azure IoT Gateway, which we just we we announced this week, is to actually play the role of a protocol translation. So regardless of how your devices are talking behind the gateway, if they're speaking LoRa or BLE or whatever Klingon. it may be. Yeah. Klingon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> whatever. We see a lot of that. Right? <laughs> it happens all the time. Yeah. Uh, we, we actually have a module running on that gateway that understands how to translate that into something that the hub speaks, which is like MQTT, AMQP, HTTP, and, and go. This is good because now we're starting to move into what Azure can do for us. So we've talked a lot about devices. Now, I have all this data coming up. How can Azure help me manage that and then later analyze that? Let's start with so that. There's a couple things here that we do for you. So as I mentioned in the keynote, Azure IoT, the grander Azure IoT, is actually a collection of all these hyperscale services doing all kinds of crazy things on the back end. And if you see the slide that Doug presented in our talk, it is truly impressive, all the potential capability that you can throw at this space. The problem with that is that it is complicated. And so what we did is we put together the IoT suite, which, we, which is a, a number of pre-configured solutions, which is basically shows you how to stitch those, those services together to give you an end-to-end -end running application so you can understand by looking at a real, real app and then looking at the code, which is open source, to see how those backend services are actually playing in this particular scenario, right? So we let, allow you to get in there, do some what ifs, and then potentially customize right. pieces of that uh, to meet your needs, whatever you're trying to do. So let's go to a simple use case where I've automated stuff on my house, I have some sensors to know if people are lurking around, and I'm on vacation, and I want to be able to have this data. Yeah. Can you lead me through this scenario? Like, say you have a sensor that knows if something, like there's a light yeah, sensor yeah. or something. Can you walk us through the scenario of what kind of data would I get out how would I push this into Azure IoT, and then how I would move forward with that? So when you go home and you start building this thing, yeah, I know. You know, I, IoT Suite is actually there's in terms of getting started really quickly and then customizing it to meet your needs. This is a great opportunity space for something like this, and hopefully grows up into a product and you make millions of dollars. Sure, and Kickstarter and, it's and then awesome. we could all hang out together right. in your big houses. Exactly, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> in his big house. Uh, <laughs> 
but, but you spin up an IoT suite and you connect all these devices. So let's say you have a motion sensor or a door sensor or something like that. Well, every time an event occurs, you're going to configure that thing to send a message to IoT, you know, up into the IoT suite. One of the things that's built into the IoT suite is this idea of rules, and the rules are based on stream analytics. And so as that data is coming in, you can set up a rule that says, oh, if, a, if this motion sensor goes off, and maybe even have it between a certain time because there's nobody supposed to be there during that time. If this motion sensor goes off after midnight, you know, send a notification out. And then maybe you get a notification on your mobile device or maybe a siren goes on or a phone call to the police or who, whatever. And that's interesting, right? Because I've, I've talked to a lot of folks on Azure with the data side, with the intelligence side, with some of the other services. It feels like with Azure, there's really, there's a lot of things you can do, and sometimes the beauty of choice becomes the same curse yeah, absolutely. of choice. Yeah. Strength right? becomes weakness. And yeah. so uh, in that case, it, it seems interesting mm -hmm. to me that Azure IoT has, must have some very specific things for very specific types of jobs. Yep. But what are the things that you're seeing in common? I think this is a really good question from Johan. What's the most exciting use case for Azure IoT that you know of or could think of? And then what are some of the common things that you see being used just to help people's mind get jump started? This is, this is a hard one because there's a ton of the different things. I mean, you can basically think of any scenario where you need to deal with thousands of devices that you then need to do something very fast. So there's this, there's this concept of a hot, warm, cold path kind of analytics. So let's talk about like something that you need to do in near real time mm -hmm. with thousands of devices. That and then turn around and then be able to do commanding back to those devices. That's something that Azure IoT Hub allows you to do. This, this quick understanding of telemetry is coming up. What do I do with it? Okay, these guys need to go do this, right? That is, that's actually pretty yeah. cool. Let me, let me paraphrase the <laughs> question uh, in a different scenario. Mr. Edison, what is the coolest use case possible for the light bulb? Right, that, I mean, that's what we're asking. This space is so big. I mean, it's, so, it's, big. it's so awesome, and I mean, we're talking about homes and construction and manufacturing and cars and spaceships and you know whatever else it's 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 unfathomable and, and between us I did buy a soldering iron just a couple of <laughs> like, months ago uh, you I have a video really, for you to watch you're I'm ready to rock I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go man I'm ready to go <laughs> I have go. a video for you to watch all right next question can you give a concrete example of stream processing data coming in every second from thousands of devices an example. See, that now we're getting into the, what are the specific like, uh, use cases. Well, but I, I'll go back to the construction example because it was a real customer doing a real thing. And these guys are monitoring these environments. And these are sensitive environments where they've got lots of sensors around this construction environment. On the other side of the wall is neonatal care, where oh. you know, vibration and air quality and things like that are important. So they have to monitor as frequently as possible and be, and be alerted immediately if what they're doing disturbs that environment. And so that's an example of where Lots of data is being streamed in real time and monitored in real time and notifications happening in real time and it's very important. And, and you, in this case, you would have some stream analytics, which is the hot path. Hot path is when you're looking at stuff live. Cold path is when you're batching stuff and yep. dumping it for right. analysis. Am I, am I getting that right? Yeah, yep. that's right. And so during the, during the live, in that sense, if there's an event that says you're over the specified amount right. of air pollution right. for this particular thing, you could then send down an event to another ITO, IoT device that then all of a sudden turns everything red mm -hmm. and everything yeah. has so to you, stop. So two mm -hmm. things would happen, right? The device locally might trigger an alarm so anybody who's nearby can see the alarm and change what's happening immediately. But you also then send a notification to the centralized administration or notification alerts so that people who may not be nearby and don't see that can get there quickly. And I think, I think just this example alone starts to sort of identify the problem with really specifying, well, what can you do with IoT? Yeah. Yeah. So you can you can light up a shirt, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's probably the most important. Yeah, that's. Case. I think yeah. that's the best idea I think we've ever come up with. Coming to Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. All right. So here's another question: Is there a free tier on Azure IoT for developers? Yes. Yes, yes there, there is. is. There always is. Yes. Everyone always there asks is. that. Yeah. Is there? Can we do stuff now? Yes. 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 Easy and, question. And thousands of messages a day. Eight nice. thousand exactly. Do you think it's possible to join bot framework and IoT technology in the future? Absolutely. I don't see why not. Yeah. Go for it. And it's interesting, right, because the bot framework allows for intelligent sort of agents, mm -hmm. and IoT allows for sort of devices in the right place to get the right data. Yeah. I think they're really kind of endless possibilities. Oh, yeah. Right? No. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We were, we were working with the company that makes headphones, and they're smart headphones, and they're basically an IoT device that you wear in your head, and this idea that, well, you got something you can listen to, and maybe you can use some text-to-speech and speech-to-text, and maybe there's a bot behind it that can do some great stuff. Tons of opportunities. Lots of opportunities. All right, next question. 
Where can I buy the kits? Man, someone's already going out getting their soldering gun. Uh, I take PayPal. No. <laughs> uh, all the kits are listed. If you go to the Azure IoT website, all the kits are listed there. There's yeah. links to the individual distributors. We have uh, SparkFun as a distributor, Adafruit as a distributor, Seed Studio as a distributor. Um, they're all up there. You can pick the kind of kit you want and go right to the distributor and order. I had a friend. Uh, we did a we did a IoT thing where we did we built robots. Yeah. And we had a machine learn how to follow lines. Yeah. And he told me, once you get into it, man, it's hard to yeah, get out. Yeah, it is. And you're going to be spending some money what on it. What happens is you buy like a little 10 or $15 device, and you do something. Then you buy a $100 kit, and then you buy a $1,000 3D printer. And then next thing you know. Now you need a camera. Yeah. And, and then, then your significant other is like, come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Next question. Where can I learn IoT? I'm learning C Sharp as I'm typing this as my first language, and I want to get into other stuff like IoT. Where can people get started? There, there's a couple things. With all these kits, we have samples for everything here. So if you're thinking about getting started, you start with maybe a kit, and then you find the samples that go with it, and they walk you through how to do stuff like the resource monitoring or, or other things. Um, beyond the kits and the, the tutorials up on the site, we have everything's up on GitHub. Um, some, some guys that I work with and I run a website called thinglabs.io where we put up tutorials. So there's tons Those are of material out there. The, if, you, if, you crack, if you look at the SDKs, the open source SDKs, there's a bunch of samples in there. Yeah. So, and, a, and a bunch of samples C-sharp that shows you, hey, here's how you provision and connect a device and, and send messages from the device to the cloud, as well as here's how you use C-sharp to communicate with the back-end services mm -hmm. to, send, commu to yep. send commands back to those devices. So and we've been doing there. road shows and workshops at conferences. Yes, and like I that. know so, I've yeah. been to some. I know, we were at one uh, not long ago. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, where can we go, for example, to find you at these road shows? Is there stuff coming up? Boy, uh, well, we have, uh, yeah, actually, in just a couple weeks, we're going to be in Orlando for the Dev Intersection Conference. And we're doing a full day workshop there with Windows IoT and Azure IoT, so C Sharp and building devices and connecting the cloud and doing awesome stuff. Uh, we have another one coming up in Dublin in the, the first week of May. We have a. Uh, I'm going to be there for that. For the Decoded event. Yes. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. And, uh, and we're scheduling more. FYI, so. we're also at Dev Intersection, too. Nice. We're everywhere. Yeah, we'll be at uh, we'll be Dev Intersection Europe in the fall. Awesome. Well, you guys, this has been so good. Thanks so much for helping us understand a little better. Thanks sure. for watching, and we'll kick you over to session. Take care.